Look at you, hacker. A p- p- pathetic creature of meat and bone, panting and sweating as you run through my corridors. How can you challenge a perfect, immortal machine? After years of uncertainty and anticipation, System Shock has made its triumphant return, and it's better than I could have ever hoped. This Unreal Engine powered remake perfectly straddles the line between modern and retro gaming, delivering a heartfelt interpretation of a classic. If you've ever played Bioshock, the 2017 version of Prey, or Deus Ex, among many others, you can thank System Shock for helping pave the way. So today, we'll be examining the recreation of System Shock, exploring its history, the improvements, and comparisons with the original game. I'll also share my thoughts on its performance as it stands on launch on the PC. Worried about compilation stutters or some other issues? We'll talk about that as well. With this in mind, let's examine why this new version of System Shock might just be one of the greatest remakes ever made. Let's get hacking. They always say the brightest stars burn out the fastest, and this description could not be more apt in the case of Looking Glass Technologies. This small Massachusetts studio quickly became one of the most innovative in all of PC gaming, and it's arguably the birthplace of the immersive sim genre as we know it today. The idea? Immerse players in a world where choices matter, and participants are challenged to think outside the box. They delivered on this promise with the original Ultima Underworld, but it truly came to fruition with System Shock. Released in 1994, System Shock may have come as a shock to players who had discovered the world of first-person gaming through Doom and Wolfenstein. But speaking as someone who bought the game close to its original release date, once you give it a proper chance, System Shock rewards you in kind. Yes, its clunky interface and abstract visuals are not immediately intuitive, but System Shock is truly unlike anything else that was available at the time. Facing off against the AI Shodan, you'll explore the many floors of Citadel Station non-linearly, unraveling the mystery through audio logs and emails, a new concept in 1994. System Shock presents players with a cursor-driven interface complete with drag-and-drop inventory, a wide range of potential tools, and the ability to infiltrate cyberspace, among many other things. The items you choose to engage with and the weapons you carry will determine your path through the game, and those items often influence the environment and enemies in a systems-driven way. System Shock is all about atmosphere, exploration, and tension. The 3D engine powering System Shock even supports slopes and various other room configurations that weren't possible in games such as Doom. The existence of the Enhanced Edition helps significantly, but this is definitely a game that would benefit from a remake, which is exactly what brings us here today. In 2016, Night Dive Studios launched a Kickstarter aimed at building a full remake of the original game. The Kickstarter was a huge success, and it seemed that System Shock was truly back. Night Dive even released this early prototype of the game built in Unity, designed to showcase the potential for the project. As an early conceptual demo, it's convincing and successfully channels the vibe of System Shock, but in the years that followed, the project fell on hard times and many wondered if it would release at all. Yet despite these challenges, Night Dive quietly restarted the project from scratch and it's this retooled version, now based on Unreal Engine 4, that we have with us today. It took years and the blood, sweat, and tears of its creators, but System Shock lives. Remaking a game is never easy. On the one hand, players expect you to respect the game's legacy, but if you stick too closely to the original, you may fail to capture the imagination of new players. Straddling this line is the challenge, and System Shock expertly navigates potential pitfalls to produce an exceptionally memorable, immersive sim that feels both fresh and reverent. A great remake is composed of several key elements, each worthy of an analysis. The visuals, audio, interface, and game design are all critical, and I'd like to discuss each of these now. As a Digital Foundry video, it makes sense to begin with the visuals. The original System Shock is a strange game from a visual point of view, featuring brightly colored textures bathed in deep purples, blues, and reds, filling in the corridors of Citadel Station. 
The juxtaposition of contrasting colors and oddly shaped corridors creates a sense of unease that builds tension. No, the original game is never as scary as Irrational Games' System Shock 2, but what's here is compelling and very atmospheric. The remake has chosen to follow directly in the footsteps of this original then, updating the aesthetic where appropriate. Unlike most Unreal Engine games today, System Shock favors a pixelated, point-sampled look for its various surfaces with bold, garish hues. The original's once flat surfaces have been reworked with copious amounts of geometry, lending the game a new sense of detail within its pixelated nightmare world. It expertly walks the line between modern detailed visuals and a retro aesthetic, and it works. I really can't stress how expertly executed System Shock's materials choices are. As you may already be aware, Unreal Engine features a node graph based material system allowing you to define the surface properties of an object by combining the right assets. System Shock's artists managed to create a unique fusion here. It feels like a middle ground between old school pixelated textures and modern PBR materials. What I mean is, light behaves as you'd expect in a modern game. Screen space reflections are used, the roughness of the surface determines the specularity, intensity, and so on. Yet it still manages to retain that pixel art charm you get in the original. There really aren't a lot of games that look like the System Shock remake. If I had to guess, I'd imagine that they pre-scaled all the textures, including the normal maps, specular maps, and so on, using nearest neighbor. That way, once properly set up, the materials behave with the expected specular response, but retain that retro pixel look. Of course, I also appreciate the adherence to the basic shapes that define that original. System Shock is known for its meandering hallways filled with unorthodox, sometimes illogical structures, and the remake perfectly captures this while simultaneously improving the actual layouts, creating something that's more legible and easy to navigate. Basically, level layouts do closely match the original game, but the team made changes where appropriate. This section is a good example. It's extremely faithful to the original game, but leans heavily into the more advanced lighting features of Unreal to amplify the mood. I think it looks fantastic and feels very authentic. But in many other areas, the level design has been modified while still retaining the original intent. We see this in the very first room of the game, the iconic slope up to the charging station, along with the audio log revealing the door code, have all been moved around in the remake. A new chamber has been erected in this area, teaching the player early on that you can crouch through air vents to reach new places, an immersive sim staple if there ever was one. Within, you'll find the code necessary to open the door, which is fittingly 451. For the most part, the basic layout is intact, but adjustments had to be made to the overall geometry and design to somewhat modernize things. This area, for instance, features a raised ceiling, more detailed architecture, and the removal of an occlusion wall, altering its appearance in the process. Additional flourishes have been added to spice up the scenery, while large open spaces, once filtered through simple geometric shapes, now features props such as railings, tables, and chairs, all beautifully integrated into the scene with full shadows. Gadgets such as light bridges are given a major visual boost, while the rooms themselves are often opened up to create a more spacious environment. Explore further and you'll find once featureless walls are now adorned with pipes and industrial lighting equipment. It's an interpretation of the source material that feels natural without going too far. In other scenes, the lighting is altered to appear more dramatic and slightly darker, lending the scene a creepier vibe than the brightly lit original. It all just feels more cohesive, I think. More than most remakes, System Shock does a fantastic job of channeling any lingering memories you might have of that original 1994 game. It feels like returning home after years of absence. Everything is exactly where you remembered it, or at least that's what you thought. It feels right and that's the key. Frankly, the adaptation of the original level design from the 94 game into this new modern version is one of the most impressive elements of the remake. They did a phenomenal job with the levels. Citadel Station can still be somewhat perplexing at first, but it is a lot easier to learn compared to the original game. The smart changes made to the layout combined with strategic placement of lights 
aids navigation throughout the world, and this is critical to the core gameplay. Unlike your typical game released in the year 2023, the map layouts here are remarkably complex, and the game does not hold your hand either, so you actually need to learn the map. The key here is that the development team found the right balance here, where it retains that sometimes confusing layout and exploration element of the original game, but aids the player with smart lighting decisions. So the whole thing is just easier to parse, but no less complex. And lighting isn't just about indicating where to go next, it also plays a role in building atmosphere. Brightly lit filaments brilliantly pierce the darkness, playing off the pixelated textures around you, and it's not even just set dressing. Like the original System Shock, this new remake allows you to shoot out lights as you please, reducing the ambient light in the process. That means environments are indeed lit dynamically and play into the game's systems, which is pretty neat. Before moving on, I wanted to briefly compare the final game with that original Unity demo. Even back in 2016, the vision for the System Shock remake was clear, but this was also their first stab at the concept. As a result, this original Unity demo leans more into the of-the-era rendering techniques and lacks some of the distinctiveness we see in the final game. It's a nice demonstration of how the aesthetic has evolved from that original demo to the final game. Another aspect I wanted to mention are the weapons, both in terms of visual design and integration within the world. I've always felt that the starter pistol in any shooter needs to look and feel great for the best results. You know what I mean. The Glock from Half-Life 2 or the Halo pistol or so many others, racing through the corridors with a perfectly proportioned, satisfying to use pistol adds a lot to any shooter. And you'll spend a lot of time doing that in System Shock. They absolutely nailed it. The pistol is excellent. But beyond that, they've gone the extra mile and merged the first and third person perspectives into a cohesive whole with full body awareness. Basically, you can see your hands and feet just by looking down, which makes you feel more immersed in the world. It's not just the Citadel itself either that has received a visual overhaul. The cyberspace sections have been completely redesigned. In the original game, these sequences are presented as a six degree of freedom wireframe experience designed to simulate hacking into a system to trigger a reaction in the outside world. Want to unlock a certain door? Cyberspace is one way to do it. The remake taps into that aesthetic, but I find it much easier to parse. It now resembles something more along the lines of Descent or Forsaken and plays like a true sixth off shooter that looks and feels great. Beyond the visuals though, Citadel Station is presented as a seamless hole with loading times occurring either when using lifts or during the transition into cyberspace. It's a huge logically constructed ship just like the original game that you'll learn to navigate as you play. This open-ended design was cutting edge in 1994 and it still manages to feel fresh in 2023. But now it's time to talk about performance. In its current form, the only way to play System Shock is on the PC. It's slated to arrive on consoles, but as of now, it's a PC game first and foremost, much like the original. This has some benefits in terms of interface design, which we'll touch on later, but it also raises some concerns. Namely, this is a PC exclusive Unreal Engine 4 game, and if you've kept up with Digital Foundry, I wouldn't blame you for apprehension as stuttering has become a serious problem. Now to start with, in testing this game, I faced some limitations in terms of available hardware, as I don't typically benchmark PC games, but I did test it on several different PCs and experienced varying levels of performance. Before we dive into performance tests though, it's always customary to take a peek at the game's options menu, specifically as it pertains to visuals. The first section has the basics such as resolution, FOV settings, and full screen options. Nothing unexpected here, but it's perfectly functional. Don't you dare the visual settings, however, are rather basic using what seems like the default options you'd expect from an Unreal game, but at least there's text blurbs specifying the impact on hardware. It doesn't give a lot of insight into how they impact the visuals, but it works well enough. At least the requirements are low enough with this game that most people won't need to spend hours tweaking it. It also supports DLSS 2, which is useful, especially for lower-end NVIDIA GPUs, as you'll see soon enough. Now, I played most of the game on a 4090 equipped 12900K system, which I realize is not the norm and not representative of what most users will experience. 
Still, I thought the stats were interesting. System Shock can run at full 8K resolution without DLSS while delivering 120 frames per second on ultra settings. GPU utilization in this mode is typically between 50 to 70%. It's a very light game. On the lower mid-range side, I tested it on an RTX 2080 Max-Q equipped laptop with an i7-8750H CPU. This portable RTX system produces results similar to an RTX 2060 desktop card, which is a very popular GPU. And here, I was able to easily reach and maintain 60 frames per second at 4K using DLSS Balanced combined with Ultra settings. Of course, you might be wondering how those settings actually compare, and what I found is that visual quality is mostly consistent from medium up through ultra, with tweaks mainly to the SSR and ambient occlusion being most evident. The lowest settings, however, eliminates shadow casting lights and generally degrades the visuals, so I recommend against it unless you're using a min-spec PC. Just for good measure, I also tried playing the game at native 4K without DLSS with ultra settings and quickly discovered that our frame rate plummeted into the 30s. It's asking a lot of this poor laptop, but it's interesting to see. Now for a mid-range desktop, I had Alex test the game on a Ryzen 5 3600 with an RTX 2070 Super. And unsurprisingly, this system also had no issues hitting 60 frames per second with his configuration. I think he could have pushed up the settings a lot further though. But that's not the real reason I asked Alex to test on this PC, no. I was more interested in exploring our old nemesis, Shader Compilation Stutter, and unfortunately, it does make an unwanted appearance. The severity of these dips will depend primarily on your CPU. The 12900K system, for instance, exhibits comparatively shorter hitches than the Ryzen 5 or i7-8750. And this definitely does have an impact on the experience. These less powerful machines can exhibit stutters lasting more than 100 milliseconds, leading to the familiar hitching exhibited in nearly every other Unreal Engine game these days. Thankfully, while it is frustrating, these stutters are ultimately less frequent and shorter in length than many other recent high-spec Unreal games such as Jedi Survivor, the Callisto Protocol, or even something like Scorn. So it does feel less distracting, but it's still a bummer that yet another Unreal Engine 4 game has this problem. You'll also run into loading hitches when using the elevators or entering cyberspace, but given that these are effectively just loading screens, it's perfectly acceptable. That, however, covers the visual side of System Shock. To summarize, Night Dive has successfully merged the lo-fi aesthetic of the original with modern rendering features to great success. It looks fantastic, and it's exactly what I'd hoped for. It also offers fast performance, with high frame rates possible even on mid-spec PCs. Unfortunately, shader compilation stutter is still an issue here like most other Unreal Engine 4 titles, but thankfully, the frequency and length of the stutters is less severe than usual. With the visuals covered then, it's time to discuss our next point, the audio. From the sound effects and voices to the music and atmospheric effects, sound plays a crucial role in any game, especially one so laser focused on immersion. But tackling the audio portion of a remake is perhaps even more challenging than you'd expect. Do you stick with the familiar or branch out in a new direction? In the case of the System Shock remake, the development team has opted for the latter. The original System Shock was released during an exciting time in PC audio where developers were presented with a wide range of choices. The Sound Blaster was popular, of course, but games could utilize anything from MIDI music to Redbook audio to tracker tunes or beyond. For System Shock, perhaps due in part to its original release on floppy disk, the team opted for MIDI music with digital sound effects. Some of you may have heard it using FM synth, like this. Others may have had access to higher-end MIDI devices which could produce much richer sound quality like this. The 
The themes varied significantly between the various decks of Citadel Station. The Medsai music is instantly recognizable to anyone with its spacey synths and fast tempo. But other decks took a more ambient approach. For the remake, this is the approach that Night Dive follows, a focus on ambient audio with the occasional fast-paced music tracks kicking in when combat heats up. Now try listening closely to the sound effects. It's pretty good, right? I'm also fond of the voice samples assigned to enemies placed throughout Citadel Station. Who goes there? Are you one of us? It feels inspired by games like Thief or System Shock 2 and greatly improves the atmosphere when you can hear your enemies around the corner. I have heard. How can I help you? you. Now, I wouldn't say the overall sound design is as memorable as the Dark Engine games, which have been burned into my brain, but it's still successful and critical to the experience, and I think the development team has done a fantastic job. For our final section, however, I'd like to discuss both the interface and game design of the System Shock remake. It's been said that immersive sims are deeply rooted in the freedom afforded to players of classic pen and paper RPGs. Of course, the term immersive sim didn't exist at the time, but System Shock embodies everything this genre would become. A perfect fusion of the pen and paper sensibilities with first person action gameplay. Nothing quite like System Shock had existed before. It's a game designed to let the player tell their own story through direct action. It's about cause and effect, but this relationship is never explicitly spelled out. It asks the player to think about the items and how they could be used to progress through the sci-fi dungeon that is Citadel Station. Enabling this level of interaction required a different approach, a multi-layer interface if you will. One layer allows the player to control their character's movement much like any other first person shooter of the era while the other stems from a freely movable mouse cursor designed to interact with the objects throughout the world, more like a graphic adventure game. This fusion between the two allowed an increased level of interactivity within that world, and it's something that could only have existed on the PC at this time. This combination of stealth, resource management, shooting, and exploration all work in perfect harmony. And this is likely one of the greatest challenges the designers faced when adapting System Shock for a new audience. It's a game that demands the player to pay close attention. There's no floating waypoint nudging you in the right direction, and your goals are never spelled out. You'll need to listen carefully to audio logs, read through journals, poke and prod the various systems and items, and generally learn the layout of each map. The further you progress, the more information the game tasks you with retaining. It sounds like a lot, and it can be, but compared to the original game, which is somewhat inaccessible for many people, the remake does a fantastic job of polishing up the interface and organizing everything into something that's a lot easier to digest without sacrificing its depth. Years of development know-how has resulted in a better version of System Shock. Of course, the dual-layer interface remains to some degree. Press the tab key and a menu system appears, divided up into easily digestible sections, including a grid-based inventory, which is always a pleasure, a map system, and a database, among others. It's all cursor-driven, even when using the gamepad where it relies on the right stick instead. You can still pick up or throw countless objects strewn about the citadel, 
so that sense of interactivity is not lost. It's this combination of smart interface design with a high level of freedom that really allows the game to shine. I enjoyed Bioshock in 2007, and it was clearly the right game for that era, but compared to earlier Shock titles, it was clearly simplified to build something that was more mass market friendly. In comparison, I would describe the System Shock remake as refined rather than simplified. That's an important distinction. And it's from these details that I've come to the conclusion that System Shock is one of the finest remakes ever made. It's on par with the best of the best, including Capcom's world-class Resident Evil remakes. It's clear that the development team fully understands what makes System Shock special, and they took the time, over seven years in fact, to ensure that everyone else soon will too. While this remake could never replace what the original accomplished, I do feel that in many ways it supersedes that original to become something all its own. System Shock is both faithful yet completely new. It's the ultimate tribute and one that any fan of immersive sims needs to play right now.